You, once a belle in Shreveport, with henna-colored hair, skin like a peach bud, still have your dresses copied from that time, and play a Chopin prelude called by Courteau, delicious recollections float like perfume through the memory. Your mind now moldering like wedding cake, heavy with useless experience, rich with suspicion, rumor, fantasy, crumbling to pieces under the knife edge of mere fact. In the prime of your life, nervy, lowering your daughter, wipes the teaspoons, grows another way. Banging the coffee pot into the sink, she hears the angels chiding and looks out past the raked gardens to the sloppy sky. Only a week since, they said, have no patience. The next time it was, be insatiable. Then, save yourself. Others you cannot save. Sometimes she's let the tap stream scald her arm, a match burn her to the thumbnail, or held her hand above the kettle's snout, right in the woolly steam. They are probably angels, since nothing hurts her any more, except each morning's grit blowing into her eyes. A thinking woman sleeps with monsters, the beak that grips her she becomes, and nature, that sprung-lidded, still commodious steamer trunk of tempora and mores, gets stuffed with it all, the mildewed orange flowers, the female pills, the terrible breasts of Boadicea, between flat foxes' heads and orchards. Two handsome women gripped in argument, each proud, acute, subtle, I hear, scream across the cut glass and majolica, like furies cornered from their prey. The argument ad feminam, all the old knives that have rusted in my back, I drive in yours, and semblable masur. Knowing themselves too well in one another, their gifts, no pure fruition but a thorn. The prick filled sharp against a hint of scorn. Reading while waiting for the iron to heat, writing my life had stood a loaded gun in that Amherst pantry while the jellies boil and scum, or more often iron-eyed and beaked and purposed as a bird, dusting everything on the what-not every day of life. Dulce ridens, dulce loquens. She shaves her legs until they gleam like petrified mammoth tusk. When to hear lute Corina sings, neither words nor music are her own. Only the long hair dipping over her cheek, only the song of silk against her knees, and ease adjusted in reflections of an eye. Poised, trembling, and unsatisfied, before an unlocked door, that cage of cages, tell us, you bird, you tragical machine, is this fertilizante douleur? Pinned down by love for you, the only natural action, are you edged more keen to prize the secrets of the vault? Has nature shown her household books to you, daughter-in-law, that her sons never saw?